There it goes. I'm moving YouTube over to my other monitor so I can have it in my the corner of my eye. There we go. All right, we're streaming live on YouTube. Go back to Zoom. All right, participants are coming in. We are live. Turn my phone on. Do you have the standard diffusion on your your uh, your your lamp over your left shoulder, or is that um, uh, left? <laughs> I have no. I have no diffusion on that, and then I just have the uh, illuminator on the other one. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. I'm going to hide Avery's screen. I don't see that. There we go. Or oh, the other, or oh. you knew what I meant. <laughs> right, when are okay. the panels coming in? When are the what's coming in? The panels, the new panels. I don't know. <laughs> the one by. Oh, the one by. Um. We'll start shipping December, January. That uh, they w wanted to start shipping now, but this year. <laughs> yeah. The year that didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so they start recording. We are all set on all channels. So Avery, whenever you're ready, we can we can get going. <laughs> well, maybe we'll give just a few minutes for people to join. Okay. Yeah, they're coming in. Yay. Jay-Z is here. <laughs> Hi, Jay-Z. <laughs> and Jeff. Hey, Jeff. I'm so envious of Jeff. I mean, I, I, he puts these pictures on on uh, Facebook of where he's at and these lovely uh, lunches as he that he has. And I'm I'm just going. I'm living wrong. This is <laughs> he's living <laughs> life. So Jeff, you need to take Roy out to lunch. Well, that'd be quite a quite a trip for me. Uh, oh, Netherlands. Yes. <laughs> Even better. Well, all right. Oh. <laughs> they won't let me in the country. That's, there's no doubt about that. Even before the pandemic, I'm sure that that was appropriate. <laughs> cool. You think we're uh, ready to get going? Sounds good. Perfect. Take it away. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Avery from Film Tools. Uh, we're really excited to have uh, Roy Wagner ASC with us today, as well as Pamela from Rotolite. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to you guys. Hello, I'm Pamela from Rotolite. I've been a filmmaker for 20 years. Oh, I can't believe it's been that long, but I shouldn't say that. Um, I'm excited to have Roy on today. Roy has been a huge fan of Rotolite and it's been wonderful getting to know him over the last year, especially as we've come out now with the new Titan X2. And uh, so I want to turn it over to Roy. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for doing this. Oh, you're very welcome. As I was mentioning, I'm sort of a reluctant LED uh, person indeed. Um, when I started using them on elementary, uh, I hated them because uh, they had a green spike in them. The actors were constantly complaining about 
how it hurt their eyes. Uh, and nobody could understand uh, what the problem was. Indeed, um, uh, the uh, 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 none of the actors knew, and we didn't know, and uh, we didn't frankly know the, how significant the problem was. Uh, there were some LEDs that could literally cause brain damage uh, in the early days of, of LEDs. And uh, so I met uh, a representative from Rotolite. He came on the set in New York, and uh, uh, I was really sort of cantankerous and, and saying, I really don't want anything to do with this, but I'm always willing to learn. And he said, well, we've solved the, uh, uh, the problem, why everybody's complaining about how bright the light is, because I was reading the, uh, the foot candles on the set and they were much lower than a tungsten light. Uh, and I couldn't figure out why the actors were squinting as much as they were. And it was that narrow bandwidth of green that was causing all the problems. And, uh, and he said, why don't you try one of our lights? And this was the uh, initial circular roller light. And uh, no actor complained. There was no complaints. And uh, he be proceeded to show me uh, with a, what's it called, a spectrometer, um, that um, uh, there was no, the, the, the green portion of the bandwidth was, was uh, not a problem. And I've been, I've hated the green portion of the bandwidth forever. Uh, when HMIs came, came out, they, they all were green. Uh, so for example, if you had a person like myself, uh, when I had darker hair and Pamela with blonde hair, Pamela's hair would always go green. And uh, we didn't have the power windows in those days to isolate uh, her and get rid of all the green in her hair or the green in a light complected face. And uh, so we would, uh, it was a real problem with the HMI. So when the LEDs came out and I saw the green spike in, in them, I was really uh, very much against it. So when Rotolite came out with, with their light and I, I was able to use it, I became a huge fan. And uh, I, I also, uh, I, loved, uh, I loved the owner of Rotolite because he was, he, he was like a no holes barred, never give up person who was passionate about what he was doing, uh, cared uh, about his product, uh, to the extent that uh, he excited me about what, what he was doing. And I've always believed in, I don't believe in big manufacturers. I, I want to use the big camera, the big light, the brand new, whatever. I want to, I want to work with people that are enthusiastic about what they're doing. And so oftentimes that means I'm working with people that are owner operators or people that are small in smaller companies and uh, they have a product that they, they, they love. So I can call them up and I say, I can a get, get questions answered. Or if I'm in trouble, or if I have a project that, that doesn't have uh, enough money to, uh, to get the big hotshot camera or the big hotshot light, I have a relationship with that person. I always contended when people used to ask me, what's the difference with Hollywood and uh, other places in the world I always contended that the reason it was different was because of relationships, because we were all in the same city. You could call up and uh, friends and say, I have an issue with this. Uh, Denny Claremont was a prime example of that. I was shooting in uh, CSI uh, with a Panavision camera and it was a Friday night. And of course the camera went down, couldn't get any, a hold of anybody at Panavision. Denny Claremont just happened to call and he said, where are you located? We were way out uh, on, in the desert. And he said, uh, I'll be there in 15 minutes. So Denny came out and repaired the Panaflex. Um, and I, that to me was the kinds of relationships I've built my career on. Uh, I contend that without like Tracy Lang in a Panavision or Denny Claremont or uh, uh, the other, other uh, people that, that are uh, uh, adventurers like I am, if I hadn't had those people, I would have never had the success I've had. 
it's it's not just having talent it's not just uh being the the top of the the mark it's having partnerships and relationships that you can trust and count on uh because as everybody knows uh the director of photography's position is one of the most lonely positions on a film set um you can uh uh, you're always in trouble for something, either taking too long or, or uh, not understanding the director's intent or, or, or something. So you must hope that you have, you surround yourself with a great crew and you surround yourself with a great team of, of uh, vendors, partners who will, will help you. And if you have an idea that they'll say, oh, that's an interesting idea. I, I think I can do that. And they'll come back within a month or six months and you'll have uh, those things that you care about as a, a part of the new product. So that began my my love affair with Rotor Light. Uh, I, there were many things that happened along this journey. One of which was I hadn't a clue that they were coming up with a, a battery system that would allow me to use a light without distribution, electric di distribution for a full day without changing the battery. Now I know there are a lot of people that have told me that they, they don't have quite that, that uh, the luck that I have, but it's close. They'll, they'll have to change the battery halfway through the day. But I've gone full days without, uh, uh, without changing a battery. But even if you change a battery, what is one of the worst things a cinematographer can deal with? It's power distribution. And if, if you have, uh, you don't have to deal with that, you're dealing with just a, a standalone product uh, that, uh, that will give you what you want right away. Well, that's a huge benefit to me. That means that it's giving, giving the director and the actors far more time to shape the performance or the scene the way they want, because isn't that what we all want? We don't want more time to light. We don't want more time for us. We really are in service of the story, in service of the film. So if anybody, any manufacturer, inventor or vendor who can come up with ways of helping us be more efficient without compromising our style or our, our art, I, that's, that's the, the bandwagon I want to be on. So that was um, uh, the biggest jumping point for me with, with the Rotor Light. Little did I know that they were going to come up with something that would compete against the Aeroflex uh, sky panel. Um, I had I'd used the sky panel. I think it's a very, very good product, but I was not prepared to, to, uh, to see the, uh, the Titan that had at least, I think, a third more light output and beam spread than the sky panel. Uh, and uh, weight, even though it's close to the same weight, the distribution of the weight is much, much easier for, for a person to carry. And uh, um, same, same issue with battery power, the same issue with battery power. And uh, uh, the diffusion, the liquid crystal diffusion is, incredibly exciting um, to have a light that basically you can you can use the shape uh, without putting anything else in front of it. Uh, if anybody knows anything about me, I'm always accused of being a hard light cinematographer. Uh, I would like someone to explain to me what a hard light uh, cinematographer is because I contend that any light, a hard light, or a soft light can be vice versa based upon how close it is to the subject and the stop. Um, I'm certainly, this I'm using the Titan here turned all the way down uh, with uh, um, a black silk in front of it. And uh, uh, it's, it's very, very close to me, but if I turned it up and stopped down, it would suddenly start taking on the look of, of a hard light. Generally, a soft light is a, a light that's bigger than the subject. Uh, so you get the wrap around. And so most of us have put up 12 by silks or 20 by silks and pounded maxi brutes or whatever we could find through that silk 
in order to get a wraparound light, which will give you the illusion of a soft light. Um, but again, based upon the stop, uh, it, it will take on the characteristics of, of a hard light based upon that stop. So uh, when the Titan came out, it was not round. I, I loved the round light uh, because to me it was psychological. Every time an actor walked on the set, they saw a round light and they said, oh, it's a beauty light. You're doing something special for me. And as we all know, I mean, I, I tell the story about Harry Stradling on Funny Girl. Um, he had something he called a Strad light. It was, uh, that was right above the map box. And when Harry died, and uh, Laszlo Kovacs started photographing her films, Streisand used to say, you've got to have a strad light. You've got to have a strad light. And Laszlo would say, well, what's a strad light? I don't know what a strad light is. And uh, uh, six months later, someone brought a photograph on the set and there was uh, uh, the, uh, the 65 millimeter camera with a strad light on it. And it said right on, on the, uh, uh, the uh, reflector Strad light in, in, uh, with a Sharpie. All it was was a squeezy uh, hardware light with a bulb in it, and that was his Strad light. But it was something that meant she knew that if the Strad light was on that camera, that someone was doing something special for her. And for most of you, I suspect one of the first things that happens with an actor when they walk on the set is they look into the mat box and see if there's a piece of glass in there because they want, to, they want to see, not only do they want to see their makeup and use the, the, that filter as, a, as a, a mirror, but they want to make sure that you put something in front of the lens because that means that you care about them and you're taking care of them. So for me, the roto light did that as well. And uh, every single actor that, that uh, uh, came on one of my sets would be enthusiastic about the roto light for that that reason alone. Now, granted, it's a round light, but I could have done the same thing with any light, but it was psychologically a great product for me because it made me look like I was doing something extra special for them. Uh, so how do you go about on, when you, when you get the actor on set, what's the first thing you do when it turns to obviously lighting? Obviously, there's a story behind in the mood you're trying to get, but to actually initially light them, what is your process? Um, I see myself as, as uh, an interpreter. I, I see myself as a writer with light. Uh, that, that, that it's, my, it's my responsibility to interpret uh, the intent of the scene uh, based upon what the director and the actors are doing. And uh, so I tend to not, I have a plan, but the plan always falls apart uh, because the actors always go to the place where you want to put your light. And uh, so I wait and, and see how they're exploring during the rehearsal, how they're exploring what their character is going to do, uh, hear what the director is saying. And then I try to find the best place for interpreting uh, uh, the intent of the scene. So that's critically important. Uh, I, I must say that I spent many years of my youth uh, learning uh, the characteristic curve tables of film, uh, light outputs, beam spread, uh, intensity. Uh, and uh, as, as I said, I was a huge fan of the arc lamp and of DC power with tungsten lights because it was it was a it was a much purer colorimetry. Uh, the the spectrum of light was much cleaner because it was a square wave. Uh, the light didn't pulse. Uh, it was always on. So uh, I I loved DC power and I loved th that. So when the HMI came out and I was having to throw Every, every light we'd have to take a color temperature meter to measure the, uh, the value and try to find uh, a common uh, 
color temperature that we could we could match. Well, the problem was we were dealing with what we visibly could see and what the color meters at that time could read. They weren't reading the full spectrum of light. And uh, uh, it got us out of trouble for the most part, but thank God for, for great colorists that, that, uh, that were able to um, smooth out our, our difficulties because the HMIs were incredibly inconsistent to the point where when we were in prep, the gaffer and, and, and the electricians would measure a light with a particular ballast and with a particular piece of cable and a particular bulb. And if you, tra if you traded that out on set, you would invariably have a, a, the wrong color temperature. And uh, as I say, it was not a, a, uh, a clean color temperature. It was a green spiked color temperature. And it was, it, it was not a, a, a sharp light like the HMI was. The H I mean, the ARC was. The ARC was a very specific collimated light. I mean, you could make it soft, you could make it whatever you want, but it was so powerful, just like the Titan is. It was so powerful that, that, that you could put a lots of different things in front of it and it would, uh, it would be whatever you wanted it to be. And isn't that kind of what we want out of a light? We want a light, we don't want to have to bring in a special light just for one thing. We want one light to do everything because production managers are always saying, really, you need six 2Ks, you need 12 1Ks, you need four 5Ks, and you need how many 10Ks? We want lights to do everything. Well, the, the great gift with LEDs is that they, they can be as powerful, which is unusual because they started out not being very powerful. They were sort of like fluorescents. Fluorescents were wonderful because you could put them anywhere but they had no output. Uh, the, the, uh, the fir you, you didn't have to go too far, far away from the light in order to, d to diminish the light to where it didn't exist anymore. And that was sort of the problem with LEDs. Now the LEDs have wonderful output uh, at a great distance from, from the, uh, uh, the unit. And uh, so for me, a guy that does not like to have lights on the set, I, I don't like to intrude on a set. For me, all motion picture equipment should be invisible to the actors as much as possible. So I'll light through windows. I never hang lights from green beds. Um, uh, I'll keep things as far away from the actors as possible because that then means they don't have to hit a mark. That then means that they have the whole set to explore from. And oftentimes uh, I'm either I'm either in great trouble because they've fallen into a spot that that's uh, not right for them or I've found a ha happy accident. For the most part, I, I, I tend to find that they've fallen into a happy accident, which I had no control over, but suddenly they're in a, a space that helps to interpret the story far better just because they at, at that moment in time fell into a shadow. So um, I, I'm thrilled about the Titan because it's large. And I, I can't imagine what he's got up his sleeve next because he's a <laughs> man. And uh, uh, he's, he loves light like I love light. He loves photography like I love photography. It's not a business for him. It's, uh, uh, it, it takes uh, some wonderful partners that, that understand him to help him survive because he's like Dato Weigert. They're both crazy lunatics. And, uh, um, and in, in the best possible way. And don't you want that with people that are building lenses and people that are building cameras and people that are building uh, diffusion. You want people that don't know any better and are, that care so much about what they're doing. They're, they're willing to push the envelope further than than uh, is conceivable because every time they do that, it it makes makes it better for me, makes it better for all of us who are out there trying to create the illusions of reality. Uh, in and, the past, LED lights have taken a lot of power, but very little output. So you had this unbalance in how much power you're taking in versus how much power you're you're getting. But with 
you know, like the Titan and with the, with our other lights. So the Titan only pulls 420 Watts. So that means you can take even a portable battery on location and not have any issues with lighting your set at full power of everything you're doing. Well, that's, that's plugged into my wall. This is my office. That's plugged into my wall. And I've got a, another roto light behind it. And above the, what the what the backlight is, is, is uh, the Neo. And uh, none of them, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> that is that's one of the greatest gifts uh, for a cinematographer. You, you can have it in a pouch by your side and if you're standing next to the camera and you're in trouble, suddenly you have a light that, that can help you. Um, yes. One of, I would love for you to put up the comparison chart that oh, you- yeah that you, you have to show the difference between the Titan and the sky panels. Because I think that it's, it's very uh, illustrative of, of the power of this unit. So we wanted to make sure we, we did this with their advertised um, specs that they had, plus with the upgraded version of the uh, 60s. And uh, of course it is very, uh, distances as well as color temperatures. So you can really uh, see exactly what we're doing compared to, you know, the others so that we do have that advantage. Um, you know, we did come late in the game, but that was almost better because we could sit back and see what everybody was doing, see where that hole needed to be filled as far as what people wanted on set and go for it. Plus that digital fusion is, is pretty amazing. Um, that's actually my next question too. With this digital diffusion, what I'm finding on productions is because of the COVID restrictions, once that light is set, they cannot go onto set and change the light or put on a diffusion. So now having that diffusion, which you could manipulate wirelessly is turning out to be quite the, the game changer. And, and it truly is. I mean, it's, it's fascinating just to, to look at it happening in front of you and uh, you don't need to see stands. Uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, I love control, uh, but the truth is that you don't need as much uh, in front of that light to control it as you did uh, with uh, the other products. Uh, you know, the, the collimator that's on, on the roto light is, uh, is another thing that's wonderful. It doesn't, uh, it, it, it collimates the light in, in a more specific, whether this, there's two different beam uh, patterns, isn't there? Of, of the, that light? Of the of the Titans? I was looking, I, I got immersed into the comparisons for a second. Not the Titan, <laughs> so, but the round light. Oh, the round light. So how they're, the, the angles, it's like this, so that it, so you get a cross of that light, which allows for it to be super soft without having to put on any other diffusion. If you, I mean, you could still put on more diffusion if you want it even more soft, but the initial to keep that low profile, it, it the light crosses like that. So it just is this beautiful, soft light on, on your subject. And it's great for, if you're in a, when I travel or if I am on location for headshots to be able to just grab those lights without having to also bring soft boxes and others. I just have a small profile with a bag. It's, 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 it's been awesome taking lights on location now. Well, when we were doing uh, uh, elementary, the, the crew was incredibly reluctant to, uh, to, to use it as, as they were on a series I did in New York after that. And, uh, you know, it's funny because filmmakers don't, they really don't want change. It's odd to think that artists would, would be the first to embrace change because anything that makes it easier for you to do your job, uh, but people are sedentary. They, they settle in, they, they like a particular product and they want it always to be the same. Within three days of using uh, the roller lights, the electricians wouldn't pull another light out of, out of the truck. They were using the roller lights exclusively and, and to the point where the series, which uh, which is now on uh, uh, the pilots on uh, Amazon called Gravesend, was virtually all lit with with roto lights, and uh, uh, we didn't have the Titan back then. And and when it goes to uh, series, as soon as we can get out of this mess that we're in, uh, it we're getting Titans to uh, to uh, to light the the bigger night work that we have to do. Yeah, there's a few productions now um, that are that are 
going all to Titans at the moment and they're excited. I'm working with their profiles, their building profiles, they're, they're doing this all remotely. So which it, we never could do this before, which is great and pl pre planning everything. And now we've got uh, several sets about to start up and they're all using Titans and it's exciting to see. And I can, I can't wait to see that, that uh, ripple effect keep on going. It just makes us faster. So that means that we have more time to be creative instead of, yeah. I always say a director uh, moves the actors and a director of photography moves the metal. Uh, in, in effect, you have to figure out if I want it, 10K out there, it's going to take 200 feet of, of, of uh, cable to get it out there. That means it's going to take a, an hour of wrap at the end of the day. I have to think of all those things and how I'm compromising uh, the director. Sorry, the I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? I, I'm not <laughs> talking to you anymore. I don't know what that means. No, I suspect <laughs> you don't. I can search the web for. This is I the best. <laughs> I'm not talking to you either. <laughs> oh, dear. That's that's Apple for you. Always talking back. Um, but uh, um, uh, the, you know, the, without the the issues of uh, cable distribution, mm -hmm. that's giving me more time to be creative, and that means that if it takes me 15 minutes to light. That's giving me 15 minutes of creative time instead of 10 minutes or five minutes to light and another five to 10 minutes to get the equipment in place. Yeah. And that means everything to me uh, because uh, the, our world is based upon compromise. And as we get older, hopefully we've learned the, the lessons of what we, we can compromise and where we can't compromise. Uh, so that we're not considered as one person called me once a hack, so that we uh, we are not hacks. Do we have any questions? Avery, do you want to do you want to be on top of the questions? Sure. Um, so one coming in about uh, saying since a virtual production stage might have LED light based video walls. Do these video or virtual production LED walls feel like an LED light to you? Well, we just did. Uh, in fact, Jay Z uh, uh, could talk to, about this more than I. I was not a huge fan of the, the video walls because I found them the, the cameras had to be painted into a very narrow space based upon the screens. Uh, we couldn't use our own cameras, and so uh, the, we. The, the system we use, which is a very successful system, uh, we couldn't use any of our own equipment. We had to use all of their material because it, it was assigned a very specific uh, color space in order for it to work. So I would say yes, but you must get um, your, your gaffer onto that space uh, early on to analyze the light coming off of the, uh, the screens so that you can back in the, uh, the LEDs into the, the proper color space. That was from Jay-Z, by the way. <laughs> you, you dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, as you've had the, you've had the Titan now for a few months, um, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about, um, have you got to play with it? Have you got to sh shoot with it yet? Yes, on, I've, on... I've shot with it a couple of times. Of course, right now it's very limited what we're doing. Uh, I frightened my neighbors a few times um, because when you, you light, it, light it up at night, it, it carries for quite some distance. But I have been able to, and I brought in uh, some, some professionals, uh, actors and, and friends that come over and always uh, wanting to learn and grow. And uh, they've been astonished by, by the product. So I, I'm looking forward to getting it out into the real world. I have to tell you something, I, I didn't expect this. It got rained on and I didn't expect it to, to survive the rain at all, but it, it was just fine. It didn't, I guess having been built at Pinewood in England, they, they might, must know something about rain. Because um, uh, the sky panels, I, I'd had some problems with 
in the rain uh, before, but I did not have any problems with the Titan. Oh, that's good to know. It is rated as an IP20, um, but we do have rain covers. In fact, um, can't really show, it's still in, it's finishing up development, but the rain cover even has flaps so you can utilize the touch screen back with that rain cover and you can put uh, in some like heating hand heaters in there if you want. So there's the rain cover is pretty awesome. <laughs> so our Canadian filmmakers will be excited about that. Yes, uh, the, the guy's a madman. He won't, he won't quit, he just keeps building. <laughs> Well, and so when I last spoke, when I was last in LA, we, when we were testing our battery block, we, we tested it. So you were going to get about 80% power out of the light on the battery block, which is still more than any other light out there. But now we have it. So you will be able to have full power on the battery block, which is exciting and unheard of. So that's another really good thing that he's been working on. What's what's because I know the software development he was doing was going to extend the the, uh, the time uh, that the battery was was uh, useful. What's the length yeah. of time? I I don't know the latest numbers yet. Uh, being not being able to get back to the UK office like I used to, I I, I don't have all that info yet. But it's uh, it's definitely in the works of, of of improving and constantly improving and changing. I'm um, getting better, which is what we want. They're always looking to get it better and to get that feedback from the filmmakers and to do the adjustments that we want. Like as it's getting more and more on the real world and things like, oh, we need this, we need this. You know, knowing that it's going straight to him to work on that is is always that. Like you said, it's that relationship. I don't understand why anybody is in this business. There's no way to make any money in it, especially if you're a vendor. I mean, you, 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 <laughs> all you're trying to do is become better and better and better, which requires either getting new equipment or uh, or upgrading the equipment you have. So as a vendor, and with all the different LED products that are out there right now, it's got to be pretty scary. But he just keeps uh, moving up and, and, and making it better and better. Uh, Stephen just asked me to make sure I send him this. I was like, I got your email, Stephen. <laughs> so, yes, this is now. Tell us how you use this on set. Uh, I've actually lit full sets with it. Uh, you know, obviously not big rooms, but I I have done it. Uh, for the most part, I use it as an augmentary light. It's something uh, if I suddenly see that the actors looking in the opposite direction from where I keyed them, I will either go in, uh, go in the uh, direction of where they're looking with that light just off camera or off, out of frame, or I'll have uh, one of the electricians stand there. And it's powerful enough that it can, it can, uh, it can do substantial work uh, as far as that. I mean, everything about filmmaking is last minute in its crisis management. Uh, we're always in the midst of crisis management as, as directors of photography, directors as well, because a direct, a, uh, an actor can come back from the trailer and say, you know, I was thinking about this scene and I don't like doing it this way. I want to I want to be able to, to do it in a completely different way. So suddenly everything that you did as far as lighting is concerned, or as far as camera movement, dollies or, or or whatever is is bust and you have to start over from from. Uh, uh, zero. So again, if I don't have all this metal that I have to move, uh, and it's not going to take the electricians uh, uh, a means of uh, distribution, and uh, and uh, the grips are actually doing artistic work instead of physical management of, of, of large amounts of equipment, uh, especially C stands, then uh, I can be faster. And truthfully, especially after we go back to work uh, after this dreadful time, they're going to expect us to be even faster. And they're going to say, we don't care about what it looks like. We will compromise anything to get product because that's what they need. They need to, need to get more and more product. So we make things look good for ourselves. Uh, it's not for them that we're doing this. We're, it's a matter of honor. Uh, to, to make sure that the work that we're doing uh, services our own desires and our needs as artists. We have a lot of questions. Avery, would you like to? 
Sure, let me dig through here. Um, yeah. Interesting question about beauty and cosmetic lighting. Um, talking about some of the, um, I suppose, maybe issues with throw of LEDs um, and making sure you're not gonna have a, like a muddy skin tone if you're kind of far away. Uh, so do you have any tips or tricks about uh, placing your LEDs or working with them so, uh, so as not to run into that problem? I know I'm here because of Rotolite. light. And I know that the, uh, there are, are plenty of, of manufacturers that I've, I've played with their lights and I know what this person is talking about as far as muddy LEDs. It's not unlike, it's a narrower uh, color space than, uh, than what we're dealing with with, with the Rotolite. light. And I know that there's a lot of people that are developing a, a, a larger or a greater bandwidth of, of, uh, of color space. But I have to say that I have not had that problem with these lights. Um, I personally find that the sensors on virtually all the cameras uh, misinterpret skin tone. And uh, uh, the Airy, Airy cameras interpret it one way, the Sony cameras to interpret it another way, the Red's another way, the, uh, the Black Magic camera is the closest camera I found that it, it gives uh, as perfect a skin tone as, I, as I've been able to, to find. But so what I do just out, uh, out of uh, due course is I use uh, cosmetic rouge on, on anything that's lighting an actor. Um, I, uh, I find that that gives back the perfect skin tone that, 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 uh, uh, that, uh, that, that I need. I'm looking at uh, uh, Pamela's skin tone and she looks great. And uh, uh, that's lit by, by the roller light. And uh, 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 whereas I'm being lit by a bare bulb right here, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, roller light, which I've got a double uh, 140, 147 on, uh, which is giving this right in here. The backlight is a, a full blue, but uh, um, I, I, I like the cosmetic rouge diffusion or light with a diffusion on the road of light. If I, I just, I think the camera sensors like that better for skin tone. Does that answer the question? Yes. Great. Um, another good question. Uh, if you could go back in time and put together a lighting package for a film or TV series you worked on using only roto light, uh, could you and which lights would you pick and use? Nice question. Um, Well, I've done a lot of different things. Um, I, I do like the lightning strike for for um, for big for the 50k or the 100k for making daylight uh, at night. I, I like it for uh, big sources of illumination, but that's a that's a special daylight. That's something that that's uh, that uh, is not what you would customarily use uh, for a, a normal day on, on the set. I would uh, I would have four uh, titans and uh, uh, two of the uh, I never can the arrows is that what the round lights called I can I never remember the name of them the the, the arrows light, the the light behind you oh oh the um, aos aos yes I, I'd have four of those but for uh, because uh, the truth is even in in a small environment, the Titan can be dimmed down. I mean, this is at one one percent right now. This light, and it's uh, three feet away from me, uh, so it can be dimmed way down, and be and it it can be compacted into a uh, into a corner. Right now, it's on a. Um, if anybody knows what this is, a do arc stand, which is a, an old arc lamp stand, which is a pretty big, cumbersome stand. But I'm. You know, I don't have a lot of different stands. Let's see. Let's see. We have a lot of questions kind of starting through. <laughs> oh, have you ever used a Neo 2 to front light somebody? Have I ever what? Used a Neo 2 to front light somebody. Of course. Yes, many times. Um, 
I'm not necessarily a guy that does a lot of front light. Uh, I do cross light and, uh, you know, back light. I, you know, this is this to me is too bright. This side of my face is too bright. I generally will go darker. I'm not, I, I'm considered a, a dark cinematographer, but uh, uh, yes, of course I would. And with an actor 45 degrees up with a, with a Neo is, is perfect. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's small. So, so it's less intrusive for the actor. Uh, again, anything I can do to hide. Uh, my mentor said, you know, Fred Astaire works for six weeks uh, to, to uh, uh, mold his dance routine. When he comes on the set, you feel like he just invented it right there at that moment. And for you as a director of photography, a director and an actor should think they can do anything and you'll be ready, ready in a second, that you'll be instantly ready. And so I've used that as, as sort of a, a, I've never wanted to or said no to a director. Uh, I've always been able to say yes. And I, I have a policy, I don't work long hours. I work the longest hours I work with are 12 hour days, 10 hours generally. And I promise to not compromise with the directors and the actors and, I, and, uh, and we get all of our work done. Uh, interesting question. Um, so do you usually use LED lights for your key light, your fill light, um, or do you use them uh, around the set for whatever you need? I, I use them for everything now. I mean, I still use uh, rock and roll pars or Mac, uh, uh, six light maxis or, or, or things like that if I want to get way back with, with a light and rifle a light uh, like it's sunlight. Uh, but um, for most of the lighting, I will use uh, LEDs. And this is spooky for me to say because I I've never been a soft light cameraman. And then um, I just have a question for myself that I would love to ask you if you're willing to answer. Um, one of the things that you talked about earlier on in the webinar was about creating relationships with different vendors or with different people around the industry. And um, I'm sure if there's some young filmmakers on here, they'd be interested to know some tips of how you do that. I think most young filmmakers think that, that because they're new, nobody's going to, uh, to service them. Nobody's going to want to, to support them. My experience has been just the opposite. Uh, I find that, that vendors are, are desperate for relationships. Uh, my father sold tires for B.F. Goodrich. He was a baseball player before, but he sold tires for B.F. Goodrich. And so when I was a young man, I said, you know, B.F. Goodrich, you have to buy B.F. Goodrich tires. And my father said, no, no, you go with the person. You go with the relationship because if you have the worst tire, but you have a good relationship, you're going to be protected and supported. If you have the best tire in the world, but a horrible relationship, it won't matter because you're, you're not gonna have the support you need. And I find that, I, I use Tracy Langan, who's passed away, who was at Panavision as, as the best example of, of all. I used to call up Tracy when I was a young cameraman. I'd say, Tracy, I've got this little feature, but we only have this amount of money, but I would like to have this amount of stuff. And it was always way too much stuff but Tracy would always find a way of, of supporting me. And so when I became more and more successful and I got into bigger and bigger things, I wasn't doing ninja films anymore or horror films anymore uh, or beach party movies anymore. Uh, then I went to Panavision because I knew that Tracy was going to take care of me. It wasn't that the cameras were better. It was, wasn't any of that. I just knew that if I called up Tracy, he was going to take care of me. So my recommendation for everyone in this business is build relationships. Build relationships with crew. Uh, one of the great tragedies that, that's happened uh, in, in one way is that we no longer can take our crews with us wherever we go. We used to be able to keep a, an entire crew together for the, our entire careers. Uh, that's 
sadly gone now. But one of the benefits is for me is I can go all around the world and every time I go with a new crew, I'm learning something new. They're teaching me new things from their point of view, the way that they do it. So it's exciting for me because I get to learn new ways of doing things. And, but the other side of it is I've built these wonderful relationships throughout the world with, with uh, wonderful crews who, if I call them and say I'm coming back to town, I know they'll be there for me. And so as far as vendors, I mean, uh, the film, film tools is great. Uh, all the places are wonderful, but you better start building relationships with people because you'll find when you walk through the door, they'll remember who you are and they'll want to make sure that, that you shine, that you're successful because they have invested in you and you're investing in them. And that to me, thing. We, we look for that in directors. We look for directors who will only work with us. Uh, we, uh, you know, Preston Sturgis uh, was a fantastic director. He only worked with, he had a, uh, a group of actors. That was the only actors he would work with. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we all did that? Where if we knew that for the rest of our lives, we would have a group of people that would always work with us because they could trust us and count on us and vice versa. And so I know that when I go and I'm looking for product, I know I can go to Jim Martin at, at Film Tool <laughs> and Jim is going, he's going to answer my questions. He's going to find a way of helping me. Uh, I'm not just a, a nobody there, I am a somebody. And that's what all of us are looking for. I, years ago, I, I realized that what made you successful was not your work as much as the vendors who would talk to each other around town and say, hey, you know, Roy Wagner's working all the time. And uh, that became sort of, that became mu much more important than I would, I just did this crappy little feature. Or I did this little, little show. The fact that the vendors started talking amongst themselves, whether it was Deluxe Laboratories or Technicolor or Vinnie uh, Claremont or Panavision or, or whomever, uh, the, the fact that they chatted with each other and they said, you know, this guy is a good guy and help him out when you can, which is what happened with me at Panavision. Um, that, that, made, uh, that made me successful. I remember Bill Fraker was uh, doing a seminar at the American Film Institute and uh, Billy was like my father. My father died when he was 50 years old. So I was raised by, by the, the wolves. I was raised by cinematographers. And um, um, uh, Billy was like a father to me. And I remember uh, he was teaching a class at the American Film Institute. And one of the students said, who are the new up and coming cinematographers? And Billy Fraker said, well, Roy Wagner is. Now here's the funny thing is, I was no better a cinematographer before Billy said that. And I was no better a cinematographer after he said that. But because Billy Fraker said I was, I suddenly became this new hot cameraman. And so relationships are everything. 100%. And while you were talking, um, someone who on set, my Titan's being used on set and they're sending me all the BTS of the commercial they're making. And us as manufacturers, we love that because we want those relationships too, obviously. We want to build that. We want people to be excited and send us pictures of what they're doing. You know, it makes that relationship all that more genuine and authentic and excited to see what our hard work go into play. Uh, but I do want to answer one of the questions that uh, is talking about how the diffusion works. Um, so the Titan, as we mentioned earlier, it's 23 pounds, but it's got all those points that you can pick up and hold. And in the layman's turn of how that diffusion works is it's uh, liquefied crystals and in their natural state, they're diffused. And as you run electric current through it, the crystals scatter. So currently the diffusion is equivalent to a 216 diffusion and you're going from a 60 degree spread to a 150 degree spread. 
Um, so if that gives you a little more insight on how that diffusion and the weight of that light works. And right now we do have the two by one out, which is shipping and people are using it, but we do have the one by one version of the RGBWW, which will have that digital diffusion. And that's gonna start uh, shipping December, January. So just be aware there is a smaller version coming out. I hope that answered that question. <laughs> Let's see. I know it's kind of going through the questions. Avery, is there any more that we, we want to see? Jay Z is asking some fun ones. <laughs> oh, goody. I love Jay Z. Just so everybody knows, he is one of the finest colorists I've ever, ever been, been around in my life. Uh, he knows uh, more about color science than anybody I've ever met. Uh, and uh, that's coming from a guy that, that was never a big fan of debts. He's not a debt. He, he's a, he is a scientist. And uh, uh, I have a great deal of admiration for him. Uh, I hope he's not listening to this part because I like to tease him. But uh, uh, if you have the opportunity to work with him, it's, it's a great honor. He's Roger Deacon's uh, uh, colorist. So I, you know, I don't even know necessarily how to answer this question and, and maybe it's something that we can, we can talk to Jay-Z about it later, but he's like, he asked, how often do we need to recalibrate an LED light or do we set them to Kelvin numbers like 32K, 52K, or do we give it a D number like D65, D60 or D55 or both? Uh, I have not had to recalibrate it and my, uh, um, uh, color meter, my Siconic color meter has, has said that it's been accurate all the time I've had it, as have the, uh, the AOS. Uh, mm -hmm. I've never had, had to recalibrate them. I do know, I do know that I've heard that they, that LEDs do burn out, but I've, I have left them on, on purpose, 24 hours a day to see if there's any, any uh, sag in the in their in the color space so this with this being the latest in led but i would love to do a test i'd love to do yeah. a test with jay-z at the academy to see oh see if, yeah. let's do it yeah let's do it this this is the longest lasting light on the market there's a since this is that that newest led diode so you're gonna look at a good seven plus years of full-time use out of this light before any potential degradation uh, so keep in mind, by the time you see any degradation, can you imagine where we're going to be out in the world of technology? So you're pretty safe that this light is going to be good for a long time. By that, by that point, the, uh, the, the manufacturer, he'll have come up with something even better anyway. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Okay, we'll perform a Roy and Jay-Z LED light test at the ACES lab of AMPAS. Great. And I'd like to, to do the same thing with the new 12K Black Magic camera, which is right here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I use the Neo. Oh, Jody. Hi, Jody. I use the Neo with Cosmetic Rouge as a strad light above the lens for an actress in her mid 60s, speaking directly to the camera. Looked glamorous. Uh, great tool. Roy operated for me as a favor, by the way. That's right. And then, so we have one more question. I had to play at the Titan at the Expo in London and it was quite impressed. So in an everyday situation, and this might be a difficult question, but what HMI tungsten setups for you would the Titan replace? Uh, up to, uh, it has a lot to do with the size of the, the set that you're on. I mean, if you're, if you're on a big giant set, uh, I would, I would prefer using the, the lightning strikes instead of a, a giant HMI because it's a big, like the 100K is, is what, 10 feet long? Uh, so you, if you get eight or 10 of those, you can light a, a, a giant space. And uh, uh, I, so I would prefer that. But in a normal room, not normal set, I would say up to a 6K and maybe even a 12K for, for output. But the, 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 the lights have a different characteristic. They're not the same light. It's not, you can't compare apples to apples. It's, they're, they're different. 
-hmm. And the only way to, to, to really understand them is to play with them, get, get accustomed to them so that you can see what they can do. Because uh, uh, I have been able to, to uh, if you look at uh, uh, a feature I did in, in uh, Winnipeg called The Stand, I think it's called The Stand, uh, on YouTube, there's a trailer. Um, we, uh, we lit that with, uh, with normal lights, but if, uh, if, uh, if there'd been any roller lights in Canada, I would have used them. And I would have been able, anything that, the, that I had, I had, I think three maxi brutes. Uh, I don't like 12 Ks. Uh, I like 6 Ks. I think I had four 6 Ks, which I seldom used. Uh, and 12, 1200s, they, uh, two dado kits, and uh, uh, um, five, two 5 Ks, six 2 Ks, and 10 1 Ks was what, what the package was. How I remember all that, I don't know. But uh, but uh, I could have easily done all of that with, with these lights and I, I, it wouldn't have had the power distribution issues. Had a great crew up there. So we, we never worked past uh, 12 hours um, and we were doing a lot of night work and, and uh, it w they were great. And, and so even though we had distribution uh, cable, uh, we were able to efficiently accomplish a lot of complicated music. It was a musical. A dark musical to boot, so it wasn't like a big, pretty glee type of musical. It was a dark musical, so uh, uh, we were able to do that with conventional lights. But it would have been so much easier with uh, LEDs. But again, so, please, you got you with anything. I mean, when new film stocks came out or when new cameras come out, you got to play with it because I am just one artist. Every single one of you is your own artist and you, you have your own way of interpreting and your own approach. And the greatest gift I could give you is suggest that you make relationships, build relationships with people to have the products that you wanna play with. And I guarantee you that, the, that they're going to do anything in their power to, to, to help you and support you. Mm -hmm. Because I don't care if you're first year yeah. film student or if you're, you've been doing it like I have for 50 years, they want to be a, your partner because that's the fun of it. it. It's not, the equipment is equipment. It can sit on the shelf and do nothing. But the, the best part of filmmaking is the collaboration and the partnerships. That, those last forever, equipment changes. Well, we are hit our hour mark, so I want to probably, yeah, we should probably close this off, but I do want to answer one more question about uh, the Titan package. How does it, how does it travel? Well, I don't live in LA, so I'm all over the North America, Canada, flying to LA, back to Utah with the Titan. And I can tell you it does travel well. You can get a That's flight nice case, case with it. That, yeah. that, that the case is very nice. It's heavy, but it's a nice case. Yes, and we are, um, so you have, uh, we redesigned the soft case. So the soft case now has wheels and oh, it's not, or it doesn't open up like the one you have now, it slides in, it's, a, oh, it's, it's gonna be even better for traveling. And then for rental houses, we have the crates that holds, uh, you know, five or six of the Titans plus the accessories. So it actually travels really well. And the weight of it, it's about, with the flight case and, the standard yoke and the stuff I put in it, it's about 80 pounds. So thankfully I've got a media pass on flight, but um, it does, it actually does travel a lot easier than, than you think. It's heavier than a light. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to protect that thing. <laughs> Incidentally, so. I, anyone, I, I have a policy I've, I've had all my life because I, I swore if I ever became successful, I was not going to do what was done to me when I started out. And that was that, you know, people would become iconoclasts and they would they would let make you think like you're the only one that ever had problems. They never had problems because they were gods. Um, so my phone number, this is my cell number, is 310-614-8362. My, my email is rhwasc at me.com. 
I do that because I want you to know that just like with the vendors, that you have someone that's gone through everything that you were ever going to go through in your life. I've gone through. I've been fired more than anybody could, could possibly want to be fired. And I've had it incredible success. So whatever you're, you're going through, your situation, good or bad, I'm here if you need to talk to someone. Um, Avery, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you for that, Roy. That's uh, that's that's huge. I mean, I think uh, we'll certainly get some emails and phone calls. So thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, so thank you uh, to everyone who's joined. Um, really great webinar. Really excited to have had Roy on. Uh, thank you, uh, Pamela and Rotolite for the event. And um, make sure to look out for an email in your inbox. Uh, I'll be sending one out later today or early tomorrow with um, some links to the full webinar so you can actually watch it if you would like to go back and see it again. And then some deals on um, the Titan as well as the rest of the Roto Light, uh, you know, uh, offerings uh, through Film Tools. So make sure to look out for that. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining. Please play thank with. I, yeah. I would like to know what you think. I really, I'm excited. It's like I feel passionate about it. For me to take an hour of my day to talk about a product means I'm I believe in it. So tell me what you think about it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Roy, for everything. And thank you, Film Tools. And um, let's go make some movies. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, bye, everybody. everybody.